back. So they'll go with the one back set. Well, this is a case where you spread the field with your receivers and Give maybe Napoleon they're, just, maybe they're just saving Kaufman for the last time. 12th play of the drive. Backside pressure ball is intercepted! Kenny Wheaton! Touchdown if he doesn't trip! Oh, baby, can you believe it? 95 yards! The improbable at the most opportune time for Oregon. The house is delirious right now. Kenny Wheaton, a red shirt freshman. Todd, you want Keelan is looking to the outside all the way, and this guy's a freshman, but he can get a jump on the ball. He makes a great cut to his left right here. Keelan is just totally taken out of the play. There were so many guys on the pile, Todd. The Ducks may kick off from their own five-yard line. There are flags for celebration all over the place. Kenny Wheaton with the interception, 97 yards. Well, there have been a lot of plays made in this stadium, and I think it's safe to say that one ranks right near the top. Todd. Todd, I've seen college football for over 35 years. I have never seen a game with its turns and twists at this game. Washington has totally dominated Oregon statistically, and they're in a situation sparing defeat right in the face. That ties the second longest return for an interception in Oregon history. Ken Klein ran one back 99 yards against Air Force in 1966. Kenny Bryant went 97 yards against Texas Christian in 77, but Kenny Wheaton's is the most important interception for a touchdown in a long, long time. 31 to 20, 49 seconds remaining. Well, Rich Brooks says that Kenny Wheaton is just a plain, good old-fashioned football player. He turned in a remarkable play, his third interception of the season. I tell you what, I visited with Coach Lambright. I said, what about this number 20, Kenny Wheaton? He goes, uh, well, I haven't had much chance to look at him. He'll he will now. That one. <laughs> He'll be looking at that one for a long time. Well, he got a long look from across the field. In a situation, we're gonna, you know, we've talked about the de decision to do that kind of play instead of handing it to number eight, but that play call gave Oregon an opportunity to win the game. Kenny Wheaton was there, had his chance, made the most of it. 15-yard penalty against Oregon for celebration after the touchdown, so they kick from the 20. Squib kick. This is Neal. And the more he runs around, the less plays that Washington will have. Isaac Walker on the tackle. He's had a good game today. 40 seconds remaining. And I, I agree with you, Ken, is that this game has had so much ebb and flow up and down. Everybody will be drained when this game is over. And it's interesting, the Huskies had a lot of success passing to their right. Alex Molden, hard time throwing to their left. Hey, Ken, when you're on the right hash mark throwing all the way across field, that ball is in the air a long time unless you really have zip on it. It didn't appear to me he had that much zip on the ball. There's the dump to Neal. And he is down, first down, the clock stops. Tackled by Herman O'Berry, 29 seconds remaining. Well, the Huskies need two touchdowns in 29 seconds. Hey, the strangest things we've seen today, anything can happen. 
I get a touchdown, a two-pointer, and then a field, field goal on the last play of the game. They get a tie. This Comes the pressure. Good night. Derek Barnes with the sack. The clock continues to move. Timeout Washington. But you know, Todd, this game is too great a game to end in the tie. Obviously, it's not going to. Final timeout for Washington, 18 seconds remaining. And I, you look at the fans across the way. I tell you what, the goalposts are in jeopardy. Uh, well, the last time that happened is when Oregon defeated UCLA here to clinch a berth in the Freedom Bowl. Bill Musgrave hitting Vince Ferry. And I think there are parts of that goalpost still on campus somewhere. <laughs> I know part of the goalpost went through uh, Walt Barger, an Oregon alum, and Big Booster's car. Hey, every those fans have every right to be out there and ready to go. I just hope nobody gets hurt. That's I hope right. they don't yeah, trample I somebody. Agree. And they really should have them backing off. Well, Sonny, you and Ken, why don't you go down there and do that? <laughs> well, okay. Because <laughs> I tell you what, I'm not going anywhere near that field. <laughs> I think, Sonny, you and I should go to a cool uh, place that is dim lights and just Swanee's. Kind of, Let's go to Swanee's. Go to Swanee's yeah, and just talk about this. this Let's go to the Duchess. Let's go to the Duchess anywhere Dutchess. over here. This game will be talked about for a long, long time in both Seattle and, of course, probably more often in Eugene. Well, as you probably know, most of those Husky fans have already clicked the TV off. Are you saying they're not watching Monday <laughs> night? <laughs> Hewitt over the middle. He's got Bruner. Bruner, look at him, still fighting. That's the sign of a true All-American. He will not give up at any point in the game. Walker and Coda, nine seconds remaining. They stop uh -oh. the clock momentarily. Late penalty flag. The fans the had better, hey, the fans had better be careful about what is this? This is uh, this is from the stupidity fraternity uh, that have now taken the field. Somebody should explain to them the meaning of forfeit as well. You don't want to get in a situation where they're gonna have to call the game off. Some people just uh, just don't really have anything inside the ears, do they? Well, plus the, the players have to exit out that That's gate, right. and the Husky players as well, and I just, uh, I just hope they're on top of it. they got to get some security people down there, and now they've come to their senses and gotten off the field. Don Essick, the public address announcer, has done a real nice job of getting yep. the message across to those people. Hey, the best I thing think, I want to tell you what, I think we're doing a good job right here not showing what's going on here in the end zone with some of the folks down there. Great job in the truck, guys. Good job. Dead ball. The other thing is, you know, the Duck defense has done just an absolutely phenomenal job. I'm sure they don't want to besmirch their record and give up a last-second score here. We need those goal posts for the Arizona game next week. I, I also want to say something else on the behalf of Danny O'Neill, or to Danny O'Neill. He has taken a lot of heat for not ever bringing Oregon back to a victory in the second half. And a come from behind come victory. Come from behind win. And he doggone it, the kid did it today in the toughest drive ever. That's it. The clock shows 0, zero, zero so not much they can do now with the fans. Let's just hope that everybody gets out of this safe and sound. Well, they swarm Hudson Stadium, a scene that we haven't seen for a long time, an emotional win for the Oregon Ducks as they defeat the Washington Huskies for the first time in six 